If historical racing is your passion, chances are you've spent some time on the NASCAR Classics website. With over a thousand races to choose from, reliving the sport's past is easier than ever. It also serves as the perfect opportunity to see Hendrick Motorsports cars from years past in Victory Lane. In fact, the team store and museum currently hold 16 race-winning cars from the team's 40-year history that can also be found in the NASCAR Classics vault. Can't make it in person? Check out your own virtual tour through the NASCAR Classics vault and the race-winning cars of Hendrick Motorsports. The first of these cars is Tim Richmond's number 25 entry from Riverside Raceway in 1987. In an era with much fewer tracks turning left and right, Richmond was the first real road course ace for the team as three of his nine Cup Series victories came on this kind of track. The car would also serve as the final race winning vehicle that Richmond would drive in his Cup Series career. Moving to the first of many Daytona 500 winning cars is Darrell Waltrip's 1989 race winning car from the Great American Race. In his 17th career attempt at the race, Walter was the only driver to forego the final pit stop and use lap traffic to draft his way around the track, saving every drop of fuel possible to win his first career Daytona 500. Still a young driver looking for his first win, Jeff Gordon drove this colorful number 24 entry to victory in the 1994 Coca-Cola 600. It was his first win in the NASCAR Cup Series. The highlight of the event had to be the 9.5 second pit stop under the green flag that pushed Gordon into the lead. Out of the car, Gordon proclaimed, I'm speechless. This is the greatest day of my life. Also taking place in 1994, Gordon won the inaugural Brickyard 400 in his home state of Indiana, again driving the unique colors of the number 24. The win came as Gordon and competitor Ernie Irvin fought until the last five laps before Irvin blew a tire. Gordon, who was conserving his tires and riding in second, made his way around the leader and drove it all the way to victory lane. Next up, we have Terry Labonte's North Wilkesboro Speedway winning car from 1996. The car took pole position but returned to the lead when race leader Rusty Wallace crashed trying to get through lap traffic late in the race. The win was the first of two victories in 1996 for Texas Terry. In 2002, Jimmy Johnson was still an unknown rookie in the NASCAR ranks. That changed after 10 races when Johnson and the number 48 team drove to victory lane at Auto Club Speedway in California. The win would also be the first for crew chief Chad Knauss and the start of Johnson and Knauss' legendary Hall of Fame career as a team. Another Terry Labonte car is his 2003 Southern 500 victory that would also serve as his final win in the Cup Series. Aided by a clutch pit stop late in the race, Labonte led the final 33 circuits en route to his second victory at Darlington's Crown Jewel race. If you happen to visit the museum, you'll find the trophy and car to be inseparable on display. One of the many cars pulled straight out of victory lane is Gordon's 2005 Daytona 500 winning car. On that February day, Gordon and Johnson, aided by the help of the Hendrick Motorsports engine department, worked together to take the lead from Dale Earnhardt Jr. late in the race. After a yellow flag sent the race to a green-white checkered finish, Gordon would pull away from the competition and win his second Daytona 500. Moving all the way to 2012, you'll find Johnson's Chevrolet that earned the 200th victory in the Cup Series for Hendrick Motorsports. On a night where the number 48 car was the class of the field, Johnson led 134 laps on his way to this milestone. Sticking with Johnson would be his 2013 Daytona 500 winning car. This would be the first competitive race that the Generation 6 Cup car would take to the track. With the new car came a whole new style of drafting, one where runs were much harder to come by, but even with this, Johnson was able to hold off the field and was pushed by teammate Dale Jr. to victory in his 400th start in the Cup Series. One of many Daytona 500 winners, Dale Jr.'s 2014 vehicle sits in nearly identical condition to when it was in victory lane. In a race that saw a rain delay and several large accidents in turn four, the number 88 was able to outlast the field and earn victory in the Great American Race. Still covered in confetti, the back bumper was signed by all members of the team as it cemented its spot in history. Directly next to the 88 is Gordon's final winning car from Martinsville in 2015. Also in true race use condition, you can clearly see the bumps and bruises from short track racing that the car endured. The win did not come without drama as Gordon overtook Joey Logano when his race was cut short in turn one. Fighting darkness and the pressure of a championship berth on the line, the number 24 found its way into victory lane once again. It would be the 93rd and final time of Gordon's career. Moving into our current drivers, Alex Bowman's number 48 Ally Racing Chevrolet has found a home in the museum. 
The car is the site of his first win with primary sponsor Ally on the Hood, which came at Richmond Raceway in 2021. On a late race restart, Bowman used adjustments from crew chief Greg Ives to pass race leader Denny Hamlin late in the race. The win would be the first of four for Bowman during the campaign. Another record-breaking car that sits on property is Kyle Larson's number 5 entry that won the 269th race for Hendrick Motorsports. The win, which had the team pass Petty Enterprises on the all-time win list, was a dominating performance from start to finish for the team. Larson would lead 327 of the 400 scheduled circuits for his second of 10 points-paying victories in 2021. Another victory from Larson's dominating 2021 was his triumph at Texas Motor Speedway, which locked him into the championship four. While the body is still adorned in the round of eight colors, the chassis was the dominant one, as it also found victory lane at Las Vegas and the Texas All-Star Race that season. Finally, the most recent of the NASCAR Classic's race-winning cars is the championship winner from 2021. Still complete with the markings of a burnout, the car sits as a monument to an impressive season, one with 10 victories and the All-Star Race. The championship was ultimately decided when the number 5 pit crew changed four tires in no time at all, jumping their driver from 4th to 1st under the yellow flag. The move gave Larson the needed track position to earn the championship in his first season with Hendrick Motorsports. Want to see the rest of the Team Store Museum? The doors are open Monday to Friday, 10am to 5pm. Come in and take all the history from the Rick Hendrick-led group.